Welcome to my channel. My name is Fernando Hernandez. On my channel, we go over health and fitness, personal development, and finances. If any of those things interest you, please stick around. So if you're asking yourself exactly how do I create a budget similar to this one, you see all these fancy colors and this complicated Excel sheet, but I'm going to teach you exactly how to do it in such a simplified way that you can do it in Excel or numbers if you have a Mac, or you can just literally do it in a notebook. So without further ado, I'm just going to quickly show you exactly how I would create something similar to this, a simplified version. So I'll just open up a new sheet here. And in this sheet, I have an example bank statement down here. So I have a bunch of different expenses here here with like reasonable charges and reasonable amounts for each of these expenses. And this is what I believe to be an average month for an average consumer. And so in this section here, I'm just going to break down exactly what the income I'm going to choose for this budget should be. Although the average household income in the US is $65,000, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, I rather take the median average and that is around $60,000. It's like 59,000 and something, but I'm going to use $60,000. That is gross. I cannot accurately calculate the net, which is your gross payment after taxes, after any withholdings that you have, any healthcare that you're paying. I'm going to take a very generous amount out of here, which is 30%. So I'm going to take our salary, multiply it times 0.7. So that brings us down to $42,000. Now to get that monthly, I would take the 42,000, divide that by 12. And then to get that bi-weekly, I would take the 3,500 and divide that by two. Most people get paid on a bi-weekly basis. So this paycheck is $1,750 net. This is our take home pay every two weeks. So in this section here, I'm going to have like paycheck one, paycheck two, 1750, 1750. And then the total, you guessed it, is just adding both. My take home pay on a monthly basis is $3,500. The reason I like to split it up and sometimes I'll have another row here with like extra income. And that's just if you're, if you sell things or if you got paid a little bit more, the job you have provides overtime. Sometimes you will have a higher paycheck. So it's kind of easier than just saying, I get paid $3,500 a month. Well, there can be some variables that would make my paycheck higher or lower every two weeks. So then from here, I'll just have like my expenses and just like categories. And then obviously here, I would just list out what the expenses are. Let's go through our needs first. So it's rent, utilities, groceries, personal shopping, which is not a need, but if within there, it's like things you need, like if you have a child, you need clothes or if yourself, you need clothes or things like that. So I'm also going to do like takeout food. So food delivery or restaurants, takeout food. Let's just start with that. The first thing is rent. So you can clearly see here rent is 1600. So let's actually add like the expenses here, rent 1600. So for utilities, we have electric, which is 100 plus water, which is 50 bucks. Sounds about normal. Normally, if you're paying rent, you still most likely have to pay electric and water. Sometimes those utilities are included. If they are for you, obviously, you don't have to add utilities here. And I forgot to mention this, but let's just write like Wi Fi and you shouldn't be spending more than 60 bucks a month on Wi-Fi. I don't think that is a need. It might be a need for a lot of people. It is a need, I'm lying. Wi-Fi is definitely necessary in today's world, so I'm gonna add that to the utilities. Okay, Wawa $12, I would say that is like, you know, takeout food. So I will go here, add the 12. Sheen, personal shopping. Definitely probably not necessary, but we're gonna add that there. Walmart, maybe some people shop for groceries at Walmart, um, but a lot of times, people buy things that are not necessary at Walmart as well. So I'm going to put that into the personal shopping category. Costco, another
another. It can be groceries. Most of the time it's groceries. Sometimes people buy random things that they don't need. So it's really up to you to hold yourself accountable to make sure that you split this up accordingly. But let's just say the $108 were for groceries. So Duncan, guys, I'm a victim of this. I love getting coffee every morning. So Duncan at $5.79, Starbucks at eight bucks. And before you're like, what is that Starbucks for $8? If you're getting the mocha frappe extreme, that's gonna be like eight bucks. Um, so gas for your car, I'll add that here. Car, gas, 50 bucks to fill up is unfortunately where we are in today's world. We already got rent, we already got electric, we already got water. TikTok shop, you guys falling for the TikTok shop. You gotta let that go. Delete TikTok, um, 65 bucks. Getting your nails done for guys. If you're getting your hair cut done, you know, that's 30, 40 bucks. If it's cheaper, good job. But for this case, we're gonna do 40 bucks. So I have Toyota here for $300. Um, I'm gonna say that this person has a $300 car note, which is ridiculous. If you have a $300 car note, um, you should really start asking yourself, do you need this car? Is there a way for me to start paying it down quicker? All of that jazz. Now we have Uber Eats and DoorDash. $25 for the month is really low, really, really low. There are a lot of people that DoorDash and Uber Eats a few times a week. So this can tally up your expenses quite a lot. You really have to be careful with the DoorDash and Uber Eats. There is no advantage or convenience of doing it. You're just lazy. That's that's just the reality. TJ Maxx, personal shopping, 50 bucks. I love TJ Maxx, but it's spend a lot there. ShopRite, 300 bucks. So if you're spending over $400 a month in groceries, and if you're just a family of two, or if you're one person, um, try to reevaluate that. But I know groceries are really high. Starbucks again. So we have 20 bucks at Starbucks. And now we get to the fun stuff. So in this example, I'm saying this person, Joe, goes to a bar or a restaurant once a week in the month, which is standard, but unfortunately not the average. A lot of people go out to eat, including Uber Eats and DoorDash, multiple times a month. So if you're on a budget and you're trying to not spend a lot of money, stop going out to eat, stop going out for drinks, because it's very expensive. Like a $100 bill in a at a restaurant for two, or three people is very normal. If you're getting drinks, apps, and an entree, that's a hundred bucks is very normal. If you're going out for drinks and it's you and a few friends and you wanna get a couple rounds, spending a hundred dollars at the bar is also very normal. So you really have to like dial that back. So I'm gonna put restaurant and bar in like the takeout food section. So we have bar 110, restaurant 120, bar 110 restaurant 120 gas another $50 fill up now we get to the fun subscriptions and this again it's a silent killer you're not thinking about it you just say oh it's 10 or 20 bucks a month but when you have four or five subscriptions now that's a hundred plus dollars a month so in this person he's modest Joe is modest he only has a Netflix he has an HBO he has Amazon Prime that he pays for monthly and that's $55 a month there are some people with Peacock Prime Netflix HBO, Hulu, Disney Plus, like you add all of those up, you know, you're up there. You are up there. ATM withdrawals. This is just like, you know, taking cash out. Everybody does it. So I'm just going to say he took out $200 a month for the ATM. So that puts our total expenses at $3,726 for the month. So my man Joe is spending more money than he makes every month and you know i'm laughing because this is like standard for a lot of people you don't even realize it a lot of people spend more than they make a month so we're 226 dollars in the red and so because of this we have to now restructure our spending we can't do anything here because this is all purchases already made so for the this month bad on you joe you spent more than you made. But if we bring back our budget, like if these are our expenses, but if we bring in a budget to kind of control our spending, when you create a budget, month one is gonna suck, you're gonna fail. Month two, you're still gonna fail, but not as bad. It's not until three months of budgeting and tracking your expenses where you start to actually start to spend in line with what you have budgeted for that month. So give yourself grace, don't beat yourself up, but really try not to spend more than 
what you're making on, in a month. So our rent, we can't change it. Back to the four, you know, back to our needs. You really can't change rent. Our utilities, let there be some variable if the electric or the water is higher one month, 250. Groceries, let's try to be at the 375 range. Personal shopping, we got we got we can't spend more than 200 bucks a month. That's that's a lot of money. Takeout food, we got to bring that down to like 350 a month. Gas, can't do anything about that. Car note, can't do anything about that. Subscriptions, I mean, Joe's not horrible, but if you have a lot of ex subscriptions, start knocking them down. And ATM, I don't know why you're taking out money, Joe. So now, this brings our new total to 3300. A month so we're in the green 170 the next thing I like to calculate is my savings rate the difference between your income and your expenses divided by your income is essentially your savings rate we're saving in the negative so that's a wash and if our budget is correct we're only saving about 5%, a little less than 5%. So if you're saving 170 bucks a month, that is a-okay, that is more than fine. We have to try now to decrease some of these things. Like maybe you stop taking cash out or maybe um, you spend a little bit less on food. Instead of 350, you're doing 300 a month or even like 275. And then, you know, if your groceries can get can go down to 325 bucks, $50 less, if you can maybe not withdraw any money from the bank. Just those small changes, you're already at $400 a month again budgeting is not supposed to be easy but the point is is to grind and sacrifice a little bit in the beginning or a lot and then you start getting in a position where you're able to compound your savings and you can be a little bit more lenient later on but for now we have to spend less than we make we have to save for an emergency fund and then we have to pay down high interest debt so this is my simplified version on a budget you can translate this to any app you can translate this to excel you could even translate this to a notepad super simple and i hope this was helpful for you